This is the eighth in the Voltage Lab walkthrough series. This video is going to be an overview of the Touch Controller 2. That's this odd looking thing at the bottom. It's a 16 step sequencer and it's a playable keyboard with pressure control, but that's really underselling its capabilities. So, so we look at each of those in more depth in videos nine and 10, but in this one, I want to describe how you use it, the user interface and what it's capable of doing. So here we've got two channels of sequencer, the red and the yellow, and this blue channel is a CV channel that's shared between them. This sets CV for each step. Um, not the pitch CV, although I suppose you could use it for pitch if you wanted, so an unquantized pitch, but the pitch is generally set by either the red channel and the yellow channel or by the keys. But this blue channel can be used as a straight up CV. We've got a straight up CV out for it. It can be used for the gate length and it can be used for uh, an envelope release time or all three at the same time. Three outputs doing three different things go into different places, all based on the single knob setting. If we look here for the red channel, we've got a gate, an envelope and a CV out for the blue. And on the yellow, we've got the same outputs again for the blues. So actually for each of these knobs, you've got six different CV output routes. And the red and the yellow knobs are generally used for pitch, although there is a CV out for those as well. It's the red CV out and that's the yellow CV out. That's an unquantized out. The pitch is quantized. We can quantize it using this menu. We'll go through the menu in a second, but we can quantize it chromatically or to major or minor scales. So we've got a 16 step sequencer, but it doesn't have to be 16 steps. We can change the step length, but that's really underselling its abilities as we've got options to change the overall pattern length using things like repeated patterns that can be up to 64 steps. That's 16 steps repeated four times, but doing different things with those four bars, like turning different steps on and off using probability or step conditions that we set down here. Again, I'll show all this in a second. And we can also jump between steps. So we can jump back, we can jump forward. We can have different probability conditions for each of those jumps. So it might jump a few times. So really when you say you've got up to up 16 steps, that could be 64, because we've got like a four bar loop that we can do things in it could actually play almost indefinitely without necessarily repeating itself. And within all of that, we can change the individual step lengths and ratchets. Plus we can have chance effects like changing the pitch, the trigger, um, shifting the notes left or right in time and adding ratchets or rolls as they're called here. And before I look at the interface, it's worth looking a little bit more of what we've got on the CV inputs and outputs because these extend its functions even further. So the red channel and the yellow channel are the same, or have the same sets of outputs. First one we've got here as an input, anything in green as an input, is the scan. So we can scan this without using the clock, if I put the scan in there, and use an output from the voltage generator that we saw in video three. We can see this is scanning now. Let's just slow that down a bit. So it's scanning through the steps using this rather than the clock. We've got a reset, so you can reset back to the first step. You can set any of the steps as the first step. And if you've got it in one shot mode, yes, we've got a one shot mode. Um, this will reset it and do the one shot. Next up, we've got repeat, and that will repeat the same step when it's got high CV input. Then we've got chance, and the chance input is effectively a setting for these knobs we've got here. So we can set these knobs and then adjust the amount of chance we're getting. We'll look at chance in a minute. Lots of things to look at in a minute. Then simple trigger out. So when we've got a step, you can see these are lit there. They're the steps that are lit on the red sequencer. That'll send the trigger out. Then the gate, it will send the gate out when there's a trigger and it'll send the gate of length depending on where the knob is. Same with the envelope, it sends a release. So it's not just a straight on and off, it's a gradual release. Uh, and then just the CV, five volts, no volts. We've got the pitch of the red or the yellow knobs, and then the CV of the red or the yellow, and then we've got pressure as well. So it's not really pressure, it's the amount of area covered by your finger, but we can send different values depending on how hard you're pushing it. So if I set up a really simple little patch, let's use, let's use the red channel, we'll send the pitch out to the pitch in of oscillator one, we'll send the gate to 
to the dynamics controller oscillator one out into the dynamics in and then dynamics out into the output so in knob mode at the minute we'll put it into keyboard mode i'll show you what i'm doing in a second but we go keyboard mode up here so it's a top row top row settings keyboard mode on it was in knob mode so now when i hit a key we're getting the pitch out from that key we're in sequencer mode so let's take it off that otherwise we're getting the the gate time of this then i can hold it on So if we take the pressure out and put that into the timbre in, timbre CV. I just don't think I've demoed that before in this series, so it was worth, worth doing that. Also, it gives a nice little introduction into what's happening over here. Well, let's take all this out for now, shall we? Or at least take this out, because I'm not going to use the pressure again. So taking a look at what we've got down here, we've got red channel and the yellow channel, and you select the channels using these buttons here. You can select them both, so you're editing both of them, or just the red, or just the yellow. If you hit edit, edit selects any of the text in yellow, which are the secondary functions of each of the buttons. So if I hit edit and press red, we're muting it. You can see it flashing. Let's mute the yellows. They're flashing, or mute them. So let's go back into the red channel. We'll put it into sequencer mode so we can see which steps we've got active. Let's put this back into knob mode. Um, edit knob modes up here to top row setting. So top row setting. So now we can add steps. Run it. Oh. So the main functions of the sequencer, whether the sequencer's on or off. So yellow. Sequence is now on, both of them. Sequence is off on both of them. Just the red, sequence is on. Run or stop. So yellow's not doing anything because we're not got the yellow button pushed. Yellow run now. It won't run because it's not in sequencer mode. Put the yellow into sequencer mode first and then we can run it. We can see it's running now. Stop. And so I'm not confusing myself. I'll just reset this now. So edit, clear and red. So I've reset the red now, so I've got nothing in there to confuse me. So this is all clear now. We can add steps, whatever we like, obviously. Let's make it a four-step pattern, just so that we're not listening to 16 steps to prove a point. Edit, sequence length four. So if we play this. Clock is the clock speed. So we can change that. I've got it on and turn at the minute. Run it. And we've got step shift, so this will move the steps in time up to 50% of the quantize value. So if we go to step shift, we'll shift, I don't know, the first one. There we go, sounds nice and out of time. Shift it forward. Put it back to zero. So. Step shift, press it, and then there we go. Back to zero. Reset just brings it back to the first step. And then we can change the first step to another step. So, um, well, now we're getting into the realms of the secondary function. So edit first step should be the second. So when I reset it, it'll jump back to this one. There we go. So running through the secondary functions then, the step length literally changes the length of the step. So edit and hold it, press which step that you want to change the length of, and then let's change that to um, eight step. Well, let's change the four steps. So it's now four steps long, play that. Step jump, let's increase the number of steps to make this more obvious. So edit, sequence length, we'll have it at eight so you press edit go to sequence length and then you change it using the keypad or the value knob so it's eight now let's play it let's put this back at one shall we 
and edit uh, step length one let's bring that back down to one so step jump will jump from one step to another step um, we can jump forward or we can jump backward so edit step jump we'll jump from this step to this step and now this is really interesting this is the probability of that happening so up to 50 percent it's the probability and then after 50 percent, we get this weird looks like an almost random selection of points of leds but it's not random this is the way remember i said earlier that you've got like four bars 64 steps well this is a way of creating um changes or predictable changes in the pattern so let's um and how do we demo this best go to edit and step jump and we'll jump from this step back to this step and then we'll set the probability of that happening we'll do it as very probable let's turn that all the way up to there and play so it's repeating and repeating So that could go on forever that <laughs> yeah the probability is rather high let's change the probability again of that so we edit step jump uh there to there and we'll set the probability as less up to there and then we'll set the probability as less it will do it every now and then uh run what i'm showing here is that we're not stuck strictly to 16 steps that repeats in exactly the same way all the time And another way we can change the way it selects if it's going to uh, jump or not is if we go to step jump from there to there is if we take this past the 12 o'clock mark we then get this what apparently looks like a random selection of uh, of leds but this is taking it up to a four bar loop and then this is precisely deciding if it's going to uh, play or not on each of those loops on each of those four bars and the way it's probably best to show that actually so below 50 percent again we're back to the probabilities above 50 percent this is shown we've got a two bar loop and it'll only play on the first bar now we've got a two bar loop and only play on the second bar now this is a three bar loop and it'll only play on the first a three bar loop and it'll only play on the second the three bar loop and it'll only play on the third a three bar loop and it'll play on the first and the second bar you get the idea and if we ratchet it all the way up to four bars they were playing on the first bar and the fourth bar not playing on the second or the third and if we try and crank it all the way up to playing on every single bar it won't do it because obviously you don't need probability if you're going to put it on every single bar so it means that you've got a predictable way of playing or changing it over four bars good way of showing that is using step conditions so we'll again i'll just reduce the length of this sequence to four let's create some step conditions then if we go to edit step condition step one if we go before 12 o'clock so between what's that i don't know um 7 p.m and 12 o'clock we've got the probability that it will play we go to there that's a hundred percent probability now if we come to here we want it to play every other bar so we're going to have a two so we've got a two bar loop and then we've got it playing on bar one and not on bar two let's play that on off on off playing that a bit slower on off now let's make i don't know let's try edit step condition step three let's have that playing or missing or a little bit playing one in every three so three bars it'll play once every three bars let's try that fingers crossed here we go listening for this one not not yes not not yes 
Below that, we've got this step chance. And what this does is we've got these chance effects here. We've got pitch, trigger, shift, and roll. So pitch will change the pitch. Obviously, trigger is whether it will uh, trigger or not. Shift will shift them left or right, as we saw earlier. Um, and roll um, is ratchets. In fact, we're not putting any ratchets on yet, have we? Let's speed it up a bit. Let's put some ratchets on number one. Edit, step, roll, one, and we'll have... Let's have four, shall we? See how we get on with that. Not hearing it because the envelope's a bit too long. So yeah, on the chance effects, pitch, trigger, shift, and roll, I won't play them all. So on those chance effects, we get the chance of if the chance is going to be a chance or not, if that makes any sense. So we've got these four here. Um, let's edit step chance. Let's have it just on, well, it's on all of them at the minute. Um, even though we have, even though we haven't got anything on there, let's just have the option on one or two. Let's put them all on the same note, shall we? So let's take those rolls off, actually, so we can hear what's happening. Um, edit step roll there off. Oh, octaves. Not sure that yet. Flashing, flashing fast. Not flashing, then lower. Get the idea. They're all playing the same note, so let's put some pitch variation on there, shall we? We've got um, chance effect pitch, so that's a top row setting. So we go to the top row settings and we hit pitch. And the chance is quite high. And if we go to the step chance, so edit and step chance, it's only on these two that I'll be doing it. So let's play. So um, these two don't have any chance on them. Let's turn these two off. No chance, but we've still got that um, every three bars it's not playing. So there we've got the um, step conditions and the step chance playing. So yeah, again, just showing you all the different variations that we can put on this. We're getting close, I hope, to understanding how this works. The one thing I've not really mentioned, although I've been using them, are these menu systems along the bottom. So we've got different menus, obviously edit, load, save, key and scale, quantize on and off, swing amount. And um, we set anything that's on the bottom, really, you can um, assign a value to. So sequence length, for example, sequence length. You've seen me doing this before, but we can use that or that. But some things that have um, options are on the top menu. So options being things like the clock source. So edit, top row settings. Now we're on the top row settings and it shows us the settings for the red channel because we've got the red channel on there. Um, so now the clock will be coming from MIDI or external, or it's a one shot. So it could be external and a one shot, MIDI and one shot. Um, but if we bring in the yellow channel as well, edit top row settings, we can see what the settings are for the yellow channel. So if I hit this, I'm now changing it for the yellow channel and the red channel. Sequence direction, forward, reverse, random. So that's the way we pick our way through that menu and it's actually quite simple once you've once you've used it a couple of times we've got a euclidean generator that's quite cool so let's go to the sequence length let's put it on all of them we go to the euclidean generator now edit euclidean generator and then we can change the euclidean pattern so you can have different patterns for the red and for the for the yellow clock divisions we've seen touchpad or random pressure we can have out there, set the MIDI channel. We did have a CV input by chance that I mentioned earlier, and I've not mentioned that really yet again. So we've got the chance knob here. The CV in will take us from zero to wherever the knob is set. So if we set the knobs on full and we have the output from the blue channel CV, where's that knob be there? We, let's just use a smaller cable, make it more obvious. So the CV from the blue 
we have that coming into the chance, then this is now setting the amount of chance. So if this is on full, well, that's the red one. So red's on full. We're now setting the amount of chance per step. So it's like parameter locking, but a different chance amount on each one. But of course, if you do that, you've then changed the gate lengths on the wall. But that's the beauty of doing these sort of things. Everything seems to start gelling together. And anything else? No, I think that covers it all. So we'll go to the next video. I will create a sequence.